According to the American Council on Education, the organizational structure of a college or university is a direct reflection of the school's size, philosophy, and objectives, and is usually influenced by the relative priorities placed on teaching, research, and public service. In this video, we will examine the organizational structures of leadership at colleges and universities in the United States. Many administrative similarities are shared by institutions of higher education in the United States. In every instance, the highest level of administration is the governing or policy-making body. Typically, this body is referred to as the Board of Regents, Board of Trustees, or the Board of Governors. Members serving on public boards may be appointed by the governor, elected by voters, or chosen by the groups they represent. The boards at private institutions are often self-perpetuating. This means that outgoing board members select a replacement as their term expires. The main duties of governing boards include the hiring of college and university presidents and creating general, fiscal, and academic policies for their respective institutions. Although the boards are usually the highest authority at an institution, they engage in shared governance with the president, senate, and other governing bodies at their college or university. The chief executive officer at colleges and universities is the president or chancellor. This individual ensures that the policies of the governing board are implemented while working with stakeholders such as faculty and students to facilitate the academic program of the institution. The chief executive officer also serves as a liaison between the governing board and the campus community by making policy recommendations. Depending on the institution, academic vice presidents are sometimes referred to as the provost, dean of the college, or the dean of faculty. The duties of this post include approving individual faculty appointments, appointing and supervising academic administrative officers, reviewing and approving administrative policies, and assisting department chairs in the evaluation and advising of faculty members. The academic vice president is also responsible for the curricular development at the institution. Depending on the size and structure, it is common for most institutions to appoint vice presidents to oversee the areas of finance, planning, and student affairs. The graduate dean is the chief graduate school officer and is often referred to as either the vice president or the dean of graduate studies and research. The responsibilities of this position include program evaluation, program initiation and termination, supervision of graduate faculty, and research administration. The chief graduate school officer is also responsible for coordinating and overseeing the research efforts involving federal, state, and private funding for the institution. The Dean of Students oversees everything from student housing and student conduct issues to coordinating campus life programs that facilitate student activities such as student-run newspapers and bringing in speakers. At most institutions, the basic unit of academic organization is the department chair. This individual is responsible for representing academic, financial, and personnel interests of the department, as well as initiating searches for new faculty members. Department chairs also oversee evaluations for reappointments, salary increases, and work with the registrar's office to address the department's classroom needs. Chairs are typically either elected to the position by members of the academic department or appointed by the administration. The principal record-keeping officer at a college or university is the registrar. The office of the registrar is responsible for the organization of students' academic records, course enrollment, and certifying students for academic honors. They also prepare directories of registered students as well as oversee class scheduling and enforce deadlines. The chief development officer is also referred to as the vice president for development. This person oversees fundraising, publicity, alumni relations, and records. The government relations officer, most commonly referred to as the vice president of external affairs, serves as a liaison between the institution and state and federal entities. This position is typically found at public institutions. The last facet of the organizational structures of colleges and universities we will cover in this video is the faculty senate. The level of authority of the faculty varies from one institution to the next. Typically, the faculty is charged with the responsibility of delivering the curricular content for classes and conducting research. The most common way that faculty exercise their authority is through the Senate and committees. 
It's not uncommon at smaller institutions for the faculty to meet collectively to discuss and make decisions pertaining to curriculum, research direction, and other matters. In this video, we discuss the organizational structures of leadership at colleges and universities in the United States, as well as the titles and responsibilities of the various offices. 